This is David Acton, Curator of Photography at the Snyte Museum of Art at the University of Notre Dame. Here are some observations about our exhibition, Touchstones of the 20th Century. This exhibition includes a handful of photographs made at the Bauhaus during the early 1920s that I'd like to take a moment to reflect on some of these. In 1919, the Bauhaus was created by the architect Walter Gropius in Weimar, where two pre-war institutions, the Grand Ducal Saxon School of Art and the Weimar Academy of Art, were merged together in a new institution, which Gropius created and called the Bauhaus. His idea was to resuscitate an, a notion of teaching from the Renaissance and medieval periods in Germany, where craftsmen were taught in long apprenticeships. The Bauhaus was organized in just this way, so there were masters and instructors and students. And it was meant to be a school that taught all different kinds of creative endeavor. So it taught architecture, painting, sculpture, printmaking, design, even music and theater and the lively arts. I just wanted to take a moment to look back at the interior de decoration and design from the Victorian period that lasted up until World War I. This is a typical Victorian interior where all of the objects are covered with frills and ornamentation so that the flowered wallpaper, the furniture has turned details. By comparison, the Bauhaus promoted a very clear geometric mode of design with no details that are ornamental or needless. This is the studio of Laszlo Maholi Naj and his wife, Lucia. And you can see that every piece of furniture is made as simply and geometrically as possible, that there are open spaces, that the objects like tables and light fixtures are all created based upon geometric form. At the Bauhaus, not only was architecture taught, but also the design of utilitarian objects like furniture and tableware. Here you see a woman sitting in the famous Breuer chair made of stainless steel tubing and you'll notice that she wears a geometric mask that comes out of Bauhaus Theater. It was still an art school, a school attended by students between 18 and 24 years old. So it was a place of fun. This is an image of a group of costumes of Oscar Schlemmer. And you can see that the same notions of simplicity and geometry are integrated into these costumes, which are used as celebrations of ballet and music. And here, in a photograph by Edmund Coline, you can see the students gathered in these geometric lockers. So they're very playful and full of energy. Here's a detail of 
a group of the faculty of the Bauhaus, and by comparison with the students, these are men who look very serious and dour. In the center is Walter Gropius himself. To his proper left stands the young designer Marcel Breuer, and next to him in a trench coat, Vasily Kandinsky, and on the far right of the photograph is Paul Clay. On the left of the photograph are three teachers of the Bauhaus that I'd like to discuss very briefly as photographers. On the far left is Laszlo moholy Naj. Behind him, Herbert Bayer. And further back in the flat cap is Joost Schmidt. In the beginning, photography was not on the curriculum at the Bauhaus. And the person who really introduced it was the remarkable Lucia Moholy. She was the wife of Laszlo moholy Naj. We see her here on the left in a self-portrait combined with a typical photograph of hers on the right that characterizes her remarkable vision, the way that she saw geometry, simple shape, and form in everyday life. Lucia Moholy studied photography herself and set up her own photography studio in the faculty barracks at the Bauhaus in 1922. And she made photographs of the Bauhaus buildings in the early 1920s that became the key documents of the early institution. This is one of Lucia Moholy's photographs of the Bauhaus buildings at Weimar. This is one of Lucia Moholy's many portraits of her husband, Laszlo Moholy Naj, who was hired in 1922 and brought to Weimar to teach the basic foundation courses. And his wife interested him in the use of photography. Together, they began to make photographs as a hobby. Moholy Naj made remarkable photographs from the beginning, finding new and peculiar points of perception. For example, here he climbs to the top of a radio tower and takes a photograph down on the landscape using the geometry of the tower itself and the plaza beneath as design components. This is the photograph in our exhibition by Laszlo Moholy Naj. It's one that he made in about 1930 when he took a trip to Scandinavia and sailed in the Baltic. Here you can see this Laplander who holds his arm in a sling creates a triangle of white that the artist complements with the triangle of white in the background. We're not even really sure where the horizon line is in this photograph. And it's made even more difficult to understand by the shadow in the foreground of Moholy himself standing with a camera up to his face, and the distortion of his shape. Jo Schmidt was an early student of the Bauhaus, beginning immediately after World War I. He studied sculpture and metalwork. He also studied design, and he designed the famous poster we see on the right of the first Bauhaus exhibition in 1923. This graphic design combines ideas of cubism, constructivism, and de stil. 
Yo Schmidt went on to teach many different programs within the Bauhaus when he became a master. He taught lettering and calligraphy, graphic design, and also sculpture. This is a photograph in the Snight Collection, which is in our exhibition by Yo Schmidt, which represents a pair of sculptures made by students by folding bits of sheet metal. This kind of teaching that is taking a flat piece of paper or piece of metal and folding it into three-dimensional shapes was one that was very common at the Bauhaus as a way of teaching the transformation of two dimensions into three dimensions. In this photograph, you can see how Schmidt has taken these two pieces of sheet metal, set them on a tabletop, and then stepped away and used the space of the table itself and the shadows cast by the sculptural forms to create other ambiguous geometric shapes and forms so that we're not sure where flat form and depth begin and end. Irene Hecht Beyer was another student and faculty wife at the Bauhaus. She was married to Herbert Beyer, and she was a photographer herself and emphasized two-dimensional geometric shape. Here you can see Irene Hecht has made a photograph of her colleagues eating on the terrace, looking down from a Bauhaus roof onto the shapes of the tables, the parapets, the dinner plates, and the heads of her fellow students to create this abstract design. The Byers and the Moholy Nage together were two couples who went out on expeditions with their cameras, making photographs on the beach and in the mountains of each other and of the landscapes and objects they found. This portrait of Herbert Byer on the right by his wife is contrasted here with a design by Byer of the Bauhaus magazine. Bayer has taken objects that he has photographed, like the set square and the pencil and a couple of geometric forms, and cut and pasted, glued them together into a montage. This is a design that includes a very distinctive typeface called Bauhaus, which was a design adopted by the Bauhaus as its organizational typography. Bayer worked during the 1920s in a medium that he called photoplastique, based upon the Moholy-Nage notion of combining photography and painting and other media. The artist made separate photographs of objects like shells and bones, little wheels, and geometric forms. He cut them out, pasted them on another piece of paper, added painted details, such as the painted shadows and the cloud-like forms, and the drawn perspectival lines giving a sense of depth into space. Once this collage was complete, he re-photographed the whole thing, and the photographic print was the final product. I can't end this subject without talking about one more Bauhaus photographer who is not represented in our exhibition, Theodore Lux Feininger. Feininger was the son of Lionel Feininger, an American-German 
designer, and painter who was hired to teach at the Bauhaus and brought his family and his son Theodore became a Bauhaus student when he was 16 years old. He was a photographer as well as a designer and painter and made remarkable photographs of his friends that were Bauhaus students, many of them representing the Bauhaus jazz band, like the one on the left, which shows the band in performance. Now, this was the 1920s, where the style of music was New Orleans jazz and the Charleston. So this band would have been playing for Bauhaus dances in which the students would have all been dancing the Charleston. And he was also involved with Oscar Schlemmer's Bauhaus Theater. And on the right is Feininger's photograph of another Bauhaus student with his remarkable mask, which becomes like a musical instrument as he stands on the Bauhaus roof and seems to play his elephant trunk like horn. I'm David Acton, Curator of Photography at the Snyde Art Museum. I hope you'll join us again for comments on touchstones of the 20th century.